Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the director of Nusantara Arts, Mas Med Danning, who allow me to talk here. I'm right now just sitting in my living room, which also I use it for my studio here in Richmond, Metro Vancouver, in British Columbia, Canada. I hope everyone are doing well, no matter how crazy the situations outside the wall. But please keep praying and keep cross our finger. Before discuss about the topic on creativity, I want to begin my own experience, true story related to uh, how I interested to the gamelan. Forgive me if somehow it sounds like to self-oriented talking. However, I would like to motivate you in certain ways. Just to let you know that gamelan was not the main subject that I chose at the first step. I was born not from the family artist. My parents did not want me to become a musician. Perhaps uh, it due to some economic reasons or other reasons uh, based on my home village. I, I was born in the rural area of Java and I live there for most of the time. So originally I can only speak of Boso Jowo or literally means uh, Javanese local language. But later on, I was interested in Wayang. Wayang is shadow puppet performance with usually invited by sponsor in certain village. So during the time when I watched the Wayang, I was attracted to the environment, but not look at the beauty of gamelan, the sound, the beauty of shadow puppet itself, but simply mainly I motivated to other stuff like uh, toys that was mm. sell at the area where the wayang performance was held. And to the food, <laughs> to be honest, because when I was in Java, to see like delicious meals during the gamelan performance or during the puppet show, is more capture my eyes rather than the beauty of the sound itself. And then later on, I was interested to watch Wayang even more. So I attracted to the story and I follow to what's going on on the screen. I begin to understand about the language itself. Anyway, uh, back to the word creativity in my opinion when we discuss about the creativity it's remind me to the words kreativitas in indonesian language or commonly called as bahasa kreativitas is from the word creative and activitas simply may be translated into the english as creations and activity. So it also reminds me with the idioms, Japanese idioms, cipto, roso, tarso. Cipto, roso, tarso. So in this regard, cipto perhaps related to our brain or thinking and roso as discussed by a professor Medianto in previous class is related to the feeling, how we use our 
maximize the function of our five senses plus Carso is the willingness to create something good. So in this regard, when we are talking about the creativity or creativity, my brains are wandering and my feelings are interconnecting. And my willingness to share with everyone, or of course, this is kind of a simple analytical points that I just found out while I was sitting in my room. Mm -hmm. So I start to remember about the gamelan again, back to my earlier story. When I learned about the gamelan, because it was not my first interest, when I know the gamelan, my focus was not on that instruments at all. Even before I study at the Indonesian High School Performing Arts at SMKI or formerly called KONRI, Conservatory Tari in Yogyakarta, I was actually accepted at the Mechanic High School because my parents was simply wanted me to become a mechanic in the village so that I can easily find the money or work or whatever to become a mechanic so I can help neighbors and someone who have a flat tire. It's just simply like that. The first year, it's not until the whole year actually, about six months, I did not continue to study at the mechanic school, but I was decided to wandering around. Suddenly I hear the sound of gamelan. Suddenly I hear the clink of bronze. It's attracted me apparently and I come closer to that school and later on I found out that school is called Conry. More surprisingly, I saw many beautiful girls are wearing beautiful costume and dancing very nicely with smiling face. I was looking at them very curiously. What the heck is this? Sorry, I use this kind of slang. But at the time, that's true. So I was wandering around and standing up around that school almost every day. Did not go to school, mechanic school, forget it. So I was coming to that school, but I have a problem with my parents because my parents heard that I did not go. So I didn't want to go back home. I decided, okay, I'm become homeless stay in Jogja, watching the dance school. I don't know yet how to play gamelan. So I was only around, 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 around without hopes. I don't know how to play gamelan. Many tourists who come to visit what they call as Ramayana Ballet. Ramayana is a tourism events performance held by the tourism departments in collaboration or in cooperation with the local dance group. At the time I saw at the Dalem Pujo Kusuman when the lead of Pak Sasmito Dipuro or host twice a day uh, Ramayana performance. I was even more attracted, not to see the gamelan, but to see the dancer and to see the tourists, how Western people come to see the performance. They are very interested and they are 
stay until very late. So that was intriguing me. I was wondering why Western people come to Indonesia and interested to see the gamelan and dance, and I'm not interested to the gamelan at all at the time. Hmm. But at least I interested to see beautiful women, although I was still young. So I decided, okay, I don't want to see the dance school at the conservatory most of the time. After that, I don't have anything to eat. So I was wondering, what should I eat? I don't want to go home to my parents. So I decided, rather than homeless, I saw the becha. Becha is a three-wheel pedicab. So I was wondering if I take the becha, practice a little bit, hopefully I can learn English and meet a tourist somewhere in Jogja. So I bring the tourists come to see the Ramayana performance. So I got the money. I don't know how to play gamelan yet. In my creative thinking, using the chipto, roso, and karso, my feeling is I want to learn English directly from Western people. Secondly, I will learn how Western people come to see the Ramayana performance. And then what the next process that I have to choose, either one. So I decided to take a beta, pedicab, find the tourist. First day, second day, third day, could not find anything. One last thing, I found one tourist walking, looking the map anywhere. And I say, hello, mister. Yeah, 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 hello. Ramayana, Ramayana, Ramayana. I said like that on pizza. It's the only word that I can say. So that tourist was, yes. Do you know Ramayana? Yes. So I got two words in English, Ramayana and yes. Ramayana, yes. So I dropped off the tourist with my pedicab. I was renting the pedicab, it's only very cheap. 100 rupiah is maybe about five to 10 dollars at that time. So during the Ramayana, I even more interested. So I decided, okay, I will wait the time until the registrations for the high school performing arts open. So I will decided to come and join. Starting from that time, I decided to learn about the gamelan. From doing, from seeing, from my feeling. It's not from the school yet. Because in my home village, there was no good gamelan. Even when I saw the gamelan performance or shadow puppet performance where got Good gamelan may be brought to that village, but when I touch the gamelan, someone not allow me to do it. So I feel very, very hurting and painful. One day if I have a set of gamelan, I will let everyone to touch and to play, to use my own gamelan for free. That was my, my feeling at that time. So pass by month by month, year by year, so the registrations open, I register and then I start to play gamelan at the class. I did know before that playing the gamelan is so fun. It's not only you meet with other people, but you think playing and thinking on the same time. If I use my critical thinking right now, this kind of skill on the same time playing, thinking, 
listening, watching how the teacher uh, explained to me in the class. It's amazing. So I start enjoy to learn the gamelan. One day, I continue to drive a pizza and find the tourists, bring it to the Ramayana performance. I have a, I have a good point because one of the musicians at the Wayang performance did not come. So I was expecting, wow, which may be, which may be good for me to share. Even I don't know how to play yet, but I decided asking why that instrument on the Ramayana performance uh, is not play, not only one or two. Can I come and join? Even without without practicing, one of the members of the Ramayana at that time, I remember, his name is Bapak Sunarti. Thank you very much. I still remember him. That's proud me. He allowed me to come and sit and he just gives the uniform. So I play. The most interesting thing to me to play the first time was Gang Saran. It's only two, 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 two. That's it. Other stuff, I stopped to play when everybody play other difficult pieces. I can either clap or just do senggaan. If Gang Saran again, I play join again. That was my first experience. <laughs> so, everybody's online here. Incredible. After that, I learned more. Back to the school. And then I remember how to use the Chipto, Rosso, and Carso. I had to use my feeling. Rosso, my Chipto thinking, and Carso, the willingness how to create something. At the class of the high school performing arts, I was not as good as other students. Lucky for everyone who come from the family artist, but not, not me. Because I was slowly, very slow to catch up the materials. At that time, that was part of the traditional piece was given during the lecture. 15 students were taking practice. I was at the gong positions. That was crazy. At the last class, it was about late afternoon, I did not sleep at all the night before because I was doing the pizza and also sleeping on the street on top of the pizza. So I was between waking and sleeping within the class. In order for me to hold my eyes awake, I have a glass of water I put in my mouth to, mm, so that I can wake up. But still, I could not hold my eyes. The water come out slowly, slowly until my, my t-shirt or my chest wet. Badly, the class was over. My friend did not woke me up because I was falling asleep. That was true story. So the classroom was locked. No one else. When I woke up, oh my gosh, no one here. My thing. So I start to use my Chepto, Rosso, and Carso. So I play as loud as I can any instrument. Tang, 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 tang. Gang saran. Lo, 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 lo. Nobody opened the door. So I start to think, wow, how I can open the door? Nobody here. I play bonang. 
suddenly I have thinking just to to pick up bonang mallets. I try to connect one bonang mallets and another bonang mallets until about four or five at that time. So I put uh, bonang mallets on the window with the hope that people who see my bonang mallet will will open the door or at least will will know that I'm inside, cannot go out. And I take off my clothes. I consider just like make a puppet. I take off my clothes and put the bonang on top of the stick and I start to 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 follow what the dalang was doing wherever I can. Oh, la 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 la! Help! 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 Talang, talang. Just like that. Suddenly, from far distance, I hear someone play something interesting. Ting 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 ting. Oh, I start very happy. Why ting 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 ting? Because ting 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 or tok 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 or tang 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 is the sounds common sounds that you can hear uh, in the Javanese village. Either someone who sell the food outside or someone who have a uh, petrol at night, a petrol using the slit drum. But at that time. That was uh, meat balls soup seller around that campus. So I was very happy with the hope that that food seller come closer so that someone will will help me to go out. So I start to think two things and to play whatever. Tolong, 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 meaning help, 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 help. And suddenly someone came up, opened the door. Ah, oh, I'm so happy. But one experience, I use creativity in this one. My chipto, my rosso, and my carso. That is, helped me a lot to the way how to become a musician right now. Even I don't want to go home until, until I decided to become a good student able to perform the gamelan and graduate from the school. That, is, that was my obsession. Anyway, uh, sorry for too much discussions, but now let's share a little bit about what I see just recently. Perhaps I will ask Matt to turn on this YouTube things. Perhaps you can imagine how the situations of Jogja, and you can think, feel using your rasa, and what might happen. Sana bermartabat, berdiri kokoh, mengayomi rakyat Memayu hayu ning bawono Sokoh jaman perjuangan nganti mertiko Jogja istimewa bukan hanya daerahnya Tapi juga karena orang-orangnya Jogja, Jogja Kontol bares, ayo dan disiji bareng 
para prajurit Lacenopati Mukti utawa mati Manunggalkan wakusti Menyerang tanpa pasukan Menang tanpa merendahkan Kesaktian tanpa ajian Kekayaan tanpa kemewahan Tenang bagai ombak gemuruh Laksana merapi Tradisi hidup di tengah modernisasi Raya dejajah deso milang kori Nyebar agai seni Lagu di pekerti the context for that that clip uh good questions uh i was choosing those piece because i would like to withdraw an attention how the composer use his brain and maximize his feeling and then also to use his willingness to do something to support the situation at that time. So using the creativity words here as a tools of doing something through the gamelan is very important. It depends on how well uh, someone's, of course, everyone have uh, their own creativity in this regard. So if I come back to the points, how important does creativity influence someone in gamelan learning? So it's that kind of example and the Jogja Istimewa is one of the good example on that. And I would be very happy later on if uh, someone would like to share with me and then to discuss. Uh, but right now, I'm sorry, it's not really the Q&A yet, so I will continue. <laughs> Uh, to move on to the way how creativity here and how I continue to learn about the gamelan. Uh, let me continue to the points again. Perhaps the word creativity in Western idea cannot be simulated Similarated into the Japanese or even Japanese word, as I said earlier. From Western etymological perspective, the word creativity may be simply translated as a unique capability of person to maximize whatever your brain, feeling, or willing, because everyone have the their own feeling the willingness of their prince anywhere. Uh, I like and very glad to hear that last time uh, Professor Sumar Sams uh, said that many of Indonesian related performing arts 
and also sources that deal with those kind of uh, subjects are to be considered as under the umbrella of discursive mode of interpretation. The word creativitas itself is very interesting because uh, at that time, perhaps during the 70th and 80th, perhaps everyone who the same meaning as creativitas and baru mean new. At that time, kreasi baru became a hot topic of discussion, especially in Indonesia, not only in the Kamalan, not only in the political situation, economy, everything's thinking about baru, baru, baru. During the kreasi baru, it mnemonic things to the order baru during the Suharto era. For example, even Pak Cokro, uh, Pak Cokro was one of the Japanese teacher who taught in Tel Art America a long time. Perhaps many of you knows him better than me. Pak Cokro was also creating many new compositions or kreasi baru. Pak Narto Sabdo, the lead of Narto Sabdo composer who also uh, well known in Java as a puppeteer and also the composer, musicians even now were creating a lot of uh, contemporary pieces in terms of Japanese gaman at that time. So perhaps between Pak Chokro, Pak Narto Sabdo, and then among other composer in Java, well known Japanese gamelan uh, teacher were compose new pieces while the traditional gamelan still exists, of course, such as at the palaces in Java, like in Yogyakarta, for example, in the Sultan Palace and the Pakualam Palace, and then also in Solo, uh, Mangkunegaran or Kasunanan Palace. All of those are still active uh, performing the traditional gamelans. Uh, perhaps some of you might interested to see uh, other traditional performing arts. Uh, you should check out on the tourism information in Java, but especially during this time, perhaps they not exist anymore. At least you can see, and also I have uh, my thesis when I was taking MA at University of British Columbia in Canada, I wrote about the uh, Uyon Uyon Morioraras. Mainly, I was analyzing related to the Gending repertoires. That was exactly discussed from the previous class. So, the Kriasi Baru was very interesting points to me to be mentioned here. So, I learned very much not only traditional pieces from the school, but also I begin to study gamelan and dance and continue to watch wayang at the area where whenever I, I was watching. One day I know that Kriasi Baru was also become a good topic during the festival, what they call is Pekan Komponis in Jakarta, that was held in 1982. At that time, I was very happy to meet some wonderful friends, composer. I think even Dr. A.L. Swarty were there at that time, I'm pretty sure, because of course, I don't want to compare myself with uh, Pak A.L. Swarty because at that time he was already a professor at uh, ASCII in Solo, uh, conservatory in Solo, but also I met other composers including the lead of Jaduk Ferianto and also Otto Bima Siddhartha, who also introduced me actually to Mbak Jody Diamond. At that time, 
that was I never think if now after 20 more years I met everyone abroad able to speak English although using a bad pronunciations or not clear grammar whatever but I can understand and I can chat with but Jody Diamond, who 20 years ago I consider very, very highly respected in Jogja during the one of the festival in Jogja. Even during the Pekan Komponis, which was held in Jakarta, uh, the lead of Jadok also introduced me one of his creativity. And the way how I learned from many different many different composers helped me a lot how I sharpen my brain, my feelings, and the willingness of my doing. So in this regard, I consider that meeting with people, listening a lot of new compositions, while also analyzing what was done earlier by many composers or many gamelan players are very important. So I would like to uh, ask everyone to listen one more from YouTube. It's one of my compositions. As you might know from the programs, of course, in the past that the traditions and uh, telecommunications and also system of communications is rather different compared to right now. I'm trying to combine between old, current and past. This is one of the example how people in Indonesia in the past communicate each other from one village to other village. That is one calling. So if you can repeat after him what he calls, that's going to be good training for us. One more. communication system that we use in Indonesia in the past, perhaps also happening throughout the tribes all over the world. But uh, of course, in the past, there's no cell phone, no website, and no text message. This is the one that we use. And I will try to communicate using this old, new, and current. Enjoy.
Uh, thank you very much. After watching two different subjects based on the gamelan creativity that you saw, I hope uh, we can share a little bit about how our Chepto and our Rosso and our Carso in this regard, back to the points, how important does the creativity in the gamelan. So if I try to pull what we did in the previous uh, class, for example, Professor Sumar Sam uh, provide very excellent information related to the gift of Wali, Gamelan Chorobalen, and from the Mangkun Bukaran, very classic. My questions right now is, how does the creativity helps the creator or helps the composer at the time to maintain their Chepto, Rosso, and Carso. To me, if we are talking about the past, the current, perhaps we can predict also what's going on in the future in relation to this. So I open uh, this time for Q&A and your response in relation to what we saw and what you think. Okay, thank you, Mathris. So we're gonna open it up to some questions now. So if you have a question you would like to ask Mathris, please put it in the, um, the chat box or just put your name there and we'll call on you. We'll, we'll put everybody in order. Um, the first question I wanna ask actually Masters, can you give us the context for this last video? Can you give us a context for the uh, performance? Was the group that you that you play with there? Is it generally play? Are you generally playing um, uh, new pieces or new compositions, or are you also playing some traditional music with that group? Uh, very good questions. Uh, previously, when I come to Canada, about 23 years ago, the group was already there and already practicing many different pieces, mostly traditional. And then later on, uh, I was probably the one who introduced new compositions to them by playing some new contemporary pieces and seems they like it. And they start to develop uh, new compositions on their own. And right now they change their mind just to prefer to compose on new compositions instead of traditional music. So that's okay to me because in my feeling, the Kamalan is not only, the keyword that I use is not only belong to Japanese anymore. Of everyone all over the world who might interested to play Kamalan, do it want to compose, do it. That is uh, good points to me. So they are practicing mostly contemporary piece and perform sometimes for gig, sometimes for workshop, for community centers, and they develop uh, some good progress on that. And they also make their professional CD as well. Uh, in fact, uh, before going there, uh, I would like to share one more time, only two minutes, if you're willing to open this one. This is an excellent example, another piece that they are working right now.
the sun in your hair Angels to sing to you Gamelan Madusari a different group than the Alligator Joy group that you shared before? Um, okay, well, I see from the attendance here that I see Chris Miller. I see also other person who may be better to explain rather than myself because when I came to Vancouver, the Gamelan was already there. Mm. And perhaps maybe Mas Chris if you're willing to share or other persons, maybe, oh, I see also Mark. Okay, let's, let's hear from Chris, for example. Actually, could we hear from Mark first? Because Mark was in the group. Hey. Hey, Mark. Hey, everybody. How are you? Yeah. Christopher. Sorry, I'm just get this straightened away here. Hi, Matt. Hi, everybody. Hi, Marsam, Andrew. My God. Um, so I know Pak Marsam had a question, which we could see where it flowers from there, but um, how to give a concise history of this is, is, um, is the challenge, to give it a concise history. So following Expo 86, Gamelan Madusari, the, the complete um, kind of court Gamelan with, was bequeathed to... Uh, the city of Vancouver, and then it went to SFU. Um, and then Martin Bartlett, one of the professors and founders of the Gamelon and it's kind of inspirations for the uh, acquisition of the instruments, went to solo in 1989 and 90 and bought a small set of uh, Choka'an or Gadon, Gamelon Gadon. And that kind of became an offshoot, offshoot group um, of members that were more seriously interested in the music. So. That's the concise version. So we had two Central Javanese gamelons in Vancouver. Um, yeah, we could go on, but Chris was yeah. joined us in the uh, what, late '80s, early '90s. Chris, I can't remember when did you join us. The uh, 1990, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anything else, Matt? Yes. Uh, I think I think that's good for now. Let's uh, let's jump over to Pat Marsum's question. Yeah, we'll go we'll go to that. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Oh, I'm muted. Huh. No, it's not. Oh, 
I just there we go. Is it on? Ada, ada pak. Is it okay? Sudah. Okay, sudah. <laughs> Mas, Mas Tres, uh, terima kasih. Thank you very much for your uh, presentations. I think it's very much, pak. <laughs> it is oh, very good. Cool. <laughs> Namong tak gaduk gaduk kulo. <laughs> I'm saying you can hear Japanese word just my little sense of nothing. <laughs> uh, it's just by coincidence that your humble background is the same as my humble background. I was born in small village in East Java. My father was the a uh, cow car driver before he became a chief of the village. Uh, well, anyway, uh, it's a good that you explain about the uh, 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 Jogja right now, and then you explain about your, your composition and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a, and creativity is, uh, says, uh, sort of you can connect the word creativity, but with all of the example that you give to us. Uh, I think we should sort of try to think about how to frame this discussion. Creativity is the interplay between persons or society with environment. And environment is shaped by culture. And then you know what culture is. Culture is it can be so complex, it can be a, a mixture of tradition, customs, beliefs, uh, even political, economic, and technological forces. So whenever we talk about creativity, it's a very complex topic. Uh, for example, uh, in your case, you compose a gamelan piece in Canada, that's required what is called adaptation of the condition of environment. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, since you gave an example of uh, hip hop, hip hop uh, Yogyakarta Istimewa, I want uh, uh, you to give us uh, uh, your perspective on the creativity that's happening in Yogyakarta and particularly the Wayang Kulit today. Uh, since you're yourself a performer of Wayang and you have a good connection with uh, Ki Sinon Groho, can you give us a little bit of uh, your perspective on the kind of creativity that happened with uh, Wayang, in the, particularly Sinon Groho? Or you can expand with uh, that singer from Jogja too, but I don't remember her name now. Uh, the one that in Jakarta. Uh, what's the name? Oh. Well, anyway, there's two ways to say non uh, And maybe you can also explain yourself about the, the idea of adaptation of a condition of environment where you are in when you compose the piece. Thank you very much, Pak Sumar Sams. Uh, of course, I gratitude to you, not only now, the small world, apparently even we are in a far distance, but we are sharing a good memory and a good Cipto, Rosso and Carso. Thank you very much again. I will keep, keep uh, noted about what you were just saying. So that's true about the Creativity, this is never ending points to be discussed. In fact, I was thinking if somehow, since you are on the top levels of positions, <laughs> sorry if I feel like to self oriented here. If you need an assistant, just call my name and I'll be there. Oh, 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 oh. My love. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just wandering around to feel how happy am I in this regard to meet you and everyone else and to share our brain, our feelings, and our willing. 
this is a missing point, no matter what the situations here or in Indonesia or somewhere else, I'm pretty sure that part of the creativity, we are actually given a chance to share, like what uh, was asked by Pak Sumarsam, how was my relationship and how was Jogja Estimewa and Ki Senonugroho, those are interrelated. The creativity is come from the link that connect from the previous idea, like connecting the dot idea about this, including the Vancouver situations and my discussion related to Kisenonugro, just to let everyone know, Kisenonugro currently is one of the famous and superstar Dalang. Dalang is a shadow puppetry, uh, the shadow puppet master who are holding the puppets all night long and create the joke and story and conduct the gamelan orchestra wherever related to that uh, duties that he supposed to deal with when he has invitation during the performance. But since the pandemic, most of the artists in Jogja, including Kise Nugroho, did not perform at all. Instead, based on their thinking, feelings, and willingness to do uh, something. So right now in Jogja, in Solo, and other areas in Indonesia, people are start to develop kind of creativity as well, including Kiseno Nugroho, who lately uh, has a Wayang Climan. Wayang is Shadow Puppet. Chiliman here is short or performed by short group with a social distance maintained uh, throughout the performance without audience. And he was brilliantly tried to help no matter he can in terms of supporting others using his own creativity as an artist he don't want to just spend his money or his wealth to help people, but also to share his willingness to perform and to entertain he himself, his groups and community and people all over the world. You can see one of the video is on YouTube under the Dalang channel. Say no Dalang channel. And last time, that was one of a good example how creativity helps others through the arts and culture. And I should mention here, thanks very much to Pak Sumarsam who donated to that event with such a huge amount of money. If seen from Indonesian rupiah, at the times. And at that time as well, on the same time, while I was calling to Isenonugro, Pak Sumar Sambur at West Lyon, Senonugro on his house while performing, I sent a text message that donations directly come from uh, Professor Sumasram Sumarsam at West Lyon. This few hundreds and then people in Jogja club and say, oh my gosh, thank you so much, just like that. On the same time, even the Prince of Mangkunegaran Palace, who were also donated on this, almost on the same time uh, Pak Sumar Samdet, even Jogjakarta Palace uh, Prince, Gusti Yudo, Gusti Yudaningrat, were did on a similar things. Other people doing that, only one word, creativity in the gamelan. Of course, gamelan can be used to perform, to accompany the shadow puppet, to be performed on its own play, uh, 
musical pleasure and also for the political tension as you can see from the Jogja Estimewa. Musically, if we see the lyric from Jogja Estimewa, it is not really pure lyric from the gamelan, but combinations of many different points come together. Visually, musically, politically, but more importantly also, they are able to combine between here and there. So exactly, I agree. I'm in agreement with uh, Pak Sumarsam in relation to the definitions and theoretical framework that you were just mentioning to us. I appreciate very much. I hope this, this can be developed more. And thank you very much for your support. Thank you. We have a question from Andrew Timar regarding lyrics. Yes, Mas Andrew, please. Hello, Kang Andrew, how are you? Interesting stories, uh, Mastris. Yeah, it's just, I was wondering about the lyrics uh, that you sang in your piece, in your work. Uh, which piece? I was saying, uh, which one must Andrew? Could you please repeat me? In Baureko. Oh, Baurekso. Rukso. Yeah, yeah Baurekso. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> I was for, forgotten a little bit about that <laughs> lyrics already, but that's related to how I feel in relation to my background from back from Java, come to Canada. At the time, I have special guests from Central Sulawesi, Mr. Smith. I hope he and his family and his friends were okay because after I composed that piece, and I was fortunately able to come to Central Sulawesi to redevelop that piece again and perform there. And the combinations of the lyric that I use is Java, Kanada, and the traditional language of Kaili in Central Sulawesi. Uh, the local people there consider as a mantra. Mantra is like old poetry. I think even not use the kawi, not use uh, Japanese lyric, but I easily translate it into the lyric that I have in my compositions. So the meaning is the thankful of creative journey literally means the thankful of creative journey so it also refers to the title itself baurekso kaili javan baurekso in this regard from japanese word is the spirit of gotong royong gotong royong is sharing sharing the spirit sharing the energy, sharing the willingness or attitude to work together. So that is the meaning of the lyrics. Uh, later on, perhaps I will be able to put under the YouTube links so that everyone can see. Even I have the notations myself. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Master. So I have a follow-up question, if I may, Matt. Please. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, it's actually about the other uh, video that, or the, the audio track that you shared from Heaven to Earth, which is uh, performed, which was performed by uh, Gamalan Madhusari in uh, Vancouver. Uh, studio recording, uh, a work by Ben Rogalski and Jessica Kenny, if I'm not mistaken. I'm wondering 
why you chose that work specifically, Masters. Thank you very much. Uh, that's remind me to how the subjects topic of discussion today is creativity in this regard, because I would also to link it to what the questions that come from Pak Sumarsan. Uh, he was asking about Kis Inonugroho, and I bring and decided to choose that piece to this discussions because Jessica Kenny is interesting figures in this regard. Is American, speak Japanese fluently, and able to sing that song very nicely, and using both kind of diatonic and pentatonic melodic patterns. And then also meet with the requirements for the performance at that time. So the CD, many songs that included on the CD was apparently part of the performance that we held in Vancouver with Ki Dalang Sinonugroho, who eventually also uh, invited to Canada with his groups of eight musicians from Java to perform and travel around Canada. And we were also fortunate to be able to perform in Solo and Bandung and Yogyakarta at that time. And we did similar performance and Jessica Kenny was, was able to perform in Canada and end up we recorded and that was the result. Thank you, Masters. Yeah, so there was a whole production that toured across Canada and, and in Indonesia. I happened to see that show in Toronto. It was, it was a fabulous show. <laughs> uh, just for your information, I discussed about Kisenonugroho and the production itself in my dissertations. Perhaps I can start with you the link. Oh yeah, I, I put over there, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that's on page 200 something. Just open it. That link, hopefully you will be able to see uh, much clearer about the uh, productions and also the Kisena Nugroho. Thank you. For those who are not aware of the future schedule, the singer that we were just talking about, Jessica Kenny, she will actually be doing a, a guest lecture uh, I think in two Sundays, <coughs> this Sunday. So make sure to come and check that one out. We're actually doing a triple, a triple lecture series on vocals, uh, starting with uh, Kitsy Emerson, then Mark Benamo, and then Jessica Kenny. Um, yeah, I, I actually have a, a, a question myself. And if anybody else wants to ask a question, please jump in to the uh, chat, chat box there. Um, I guess my, my question is sort of a comment and a question at the same time. Our gamelan group here in Buffalo is, we're, we're um, like many gamelan groups in the United States, not completely unaware of um, new composition. So I, we, we tended to stay more towards the traditional repertoire in the last two years, but the first two years that our group was around, we had several performances where we wrote and performed new music compositions in a variety of contexts. And the one that was fascinating to me, we had several that were fairly, fairly interesting, but one of them we were uh, hired to play in a uh, 100 foot tall abandoned grain elevator, which is basically a gigantic concrete cylinder that every small noise you make uh, resonates for about, I think it's 12 seconds. It's a gigantic old silo. The original plan was to play traditional gamelan music for a theater production in there, but we couldn't. It was impossible to follow anybody, and, and the, the, the drums sounded awful in there. So we, we decided to write brand new compositions instead for that very specific place. And it turned out really, it was very interesting and very fun. Unfortunately, the recordings were all terrible, so we, we've never uh, been able to share that with anybody. But Something that really strikes me about the new music um, is how it's a very like 
seemingly uh, outside of the Wyong context, you see a lot more of it in North America um, in my, in my uh, experience than in Java. Um, I, I, I'm not super aware of a lot of gamelan groups that are not playing Wyong that are doing more, tradi more experimental music. Maybe you know some groups that are doing some different kinds of things in, in Java you could uh, make us aware of. Uh, because I'm not, I'm not aware of that, that type of uh, group. Uh, yes, uh, it's very brilliant thinking. Thank you for sharing your uh, idea. There are lots of genre, musical genre, even under the umbrella of Gamelan right now. If I try to pull the link that from the past and current and maybe can be predicted also to the future prospect, Gamelan is never ending. I think if my father were still alive, he feel very happy that I finally choose Gamelan as the field that I like the way now. Yeah, anyway, uh, back to your questions. In Indonesia, since eight years, there are many, many groups who are focusing on contemporary gamelan piece. And even they decided themselves not really touching to traditional gamelan. And other groups in Java only focus on traditional gamelan without looking at uh, contemporary pieces. I remember one thing that uh, that's remember to my mind all the time how one of the presentation that Professor Sumat some consider about the Champur Sari, but anecdotally, uh, many people who don't like the contemporary pieces consider instead of Champur Sari, the Sari S A R I, they change it to other words. I don't want to say it in here. But you can predict how creative are they. Not only musically, but also theoretically. <laughs> how smart Pak Sumarsan to use that kind of points in one of his seminar. Anyway, in North America, uh, there are also many Kamalan groups who are also focusing on contemporary pieces, like from Song, Song Lions, uh, Son of Lions. I think, and also Jared Powell at uh, Seattle, who used to uh, to invited me to perform, and I was composed one of my piece for him that was performed in Seattle, and it not really finished yet. So I tried to finish it in Vancouver at that time, but the first time performed was held in in Seattle. The name's called Ganjil. It's on the same albums that Jessica has that uh, as songs on that CD. As a follow-up to that, I, I think it's interesting how uh, last uh, lecture we had the interview with Darsona. We talked about how much. Um, Narto Sabdo was a innovator and a creative musician and composer. And he, I, I don't remember the phrase that was talked about in the Q&A session, but it was basically the, the idea was the musicians had to stay relevant to their time to continue to be popular. So not everybody was a really big fan of playing lots of langams or champersari. Oh yeah, there is Jaman Kalakon, Kalakon, Jaman Kalakon. Thanks, Chris. Um, so yeah, it's fascinating how, how they did that for survival and probably self-preservation and, and to stay relevant and, and to reach a wider audience that was changing at the time. And now we see a bit more of a, a divide between the traditional and the music contemporary. So I find it a little fascinating that, that Traditional gamelan has not sort of kept up with that innovation that we have 
maybe seen in the past in a popular in a popular sense. Um, it's just uh, yeah, fascinating to me. Yeah, I wonder if 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 it will change in Java in the future to, to seeing more innovation in sort of musical gamelan that is appreciated by a wide variety of people. Exactly. Uh, thank you very much for bringing. Yes, true. Uh, many Javanese idioms is actually very relevant, even useful to be included in such discussions. However, when we talk about that idioms using the Javanese traditional language, maybe if you talk about the gamelans should follow the Jaman Kelakone, if you are talking in Indonesia or in Java in particular, might is easily understood. But in Western country to deal about Jaman Kelakone is a bit, a bit complicated, a bit complicated in this regard because uh, somehow you have to deal with history, who doing what and when and how. There is Jaman Kelakone in the past. If we are dealing about Jaman Kelakone which is an activity of things by someone in particular who knows about the subject, perform it in certain area with specific audience, that Jaman Kelakone right now, perhaps in the future prospect, I predict, I assume, it's going to be never ending. As a will of life is also back to the Japanese uh, idiom again. Upenging cokro manggilingan is even more complicated than zaman kelakone. Perhaps Pak Sumarsam will be able to explain the last one that I was just mentioned, uh, which is upenging cokro manggilingan. I believe. Upenging chakra is the rolling of the wheel of life. Chakra is the circle. Chakra also means the weapon used by the Vishnu. And Mangilingan meaning rotating. If I link, link it to this item related to, to your questions, do you think the future prospect related to Gamelan will come back and more and more and use the old idea combine it with the new and then from the new we might wandering around to use the old idea again yes true that is the theoretical framework that i might consider to be used also in the the selections of traditional kending especially uh, that help in certain area in java like in the Pakualaman Palace, for example, where I discuss a little bit about the reason how selecting uh, beautiful pieces under the directions of uh, Abdi Dalam, Abdi Dalam Punokawan in Pakualaman Palace, who choose using the names and the character of the pieces and the similar pattern and appropriate rasa is actually similar to what we discussed in the previous class. Back to your questions related to the idea of combination between old and new. It's exactly, you see from the first example of video that I share with everyone today in Jogja Estimewa, perhaps everyone still remember the gift from Bali and also from the Skaten, the main tones from the Jogja Estimewa songs was five and one. And then from, from that point become five, three, two, one, stretch it out. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, do, 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 Tek, 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 remind us to the sekaten, how busy and sacred that piece in combinations with other uh, social image and then also 
situations during the scatter that you saw from your video last time. I hope that's help. Thank you. I have a question here from Butet. If you would like to uh, jump on Butet and ask your question, feel free. Thank you. Uh, can I speak Indonesian to him? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pak Sutrisno, uh, terima kasih. Nama saya Butet. Saya mau nanya, apakah pernah menggabungkan gamelan dengan angklung? Karena di sini di Washington DC ada grup angklung yang cukup terkenal dan bisa sering menggunakan komposisi yang baru. Cuma hanya saja setiap berusaha untuk ber menggabungkan dengan gamelan agak-agak sedikit susah. Nah, saya hanya bertanya apakah pernah punya pengalaman untuk menggabungkan gamelan dengan angklung? Apakah kalau pernah, apakah mudah atau sulit? Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry if I allow to translate uh, what she said was did you ever try to compose or to try to combine between angklung and gamelan is that your questions yeah betul. yes uh, the answer is yes i did but if you ask more questions how that is more uh, analytical points here because between angklung and gamelan are two different style of music usually angklung which come from west java uh, using the diatonic scale which is do re mi fa sol la si do but in javanese gamelan they use the laras what we call slindro and pelok however there are again under the title of creativity it's never ending topics because under the, this topic of creativity and the hand of creative persons, everything can be done very quickly. For example, uh, if you know about the Gamelan Kiai Kanjeng, although many people not consider that is Gamelan, but is well known in Indonesia to be considered as Gamelan as well. Gamelan Kiai Kanjeng using many different uh, instruments and sometimes included in that orchestra as synthesizers, violin, drums, and so on and so on. And it's well accepted, again related to the Jaman Kelakoni. Of course, if you perform uh, those kind of uh, contemporary pieces, combining many different elements of music, perhaps we should find also the time and then also place and the situations. The contextual theoretical framework back to the idiom similar to Jaman Kelakone and then in Bali perhaps refers to what they call as uh, Desa Kalapatra. Desa mean place, kala is time, patra is uh, circumstantial situation. Yeah, so I would be very happy to help if there are going to be uh, opportunity. Just send me email. I will be happy to share with you. Thank you for your question. Terima kasih, Bapak. Sama-sama. I have another question from Andrew. Uh, Timar. Yes, Mas Andrew, please. Yes, uh, what role does the music of the Prajuritan play in Jogja Istimewa? Uh, can I clarify with you about the music Prajuritan in the Sultan Palace or your question specifically to the Prajuritan on that video? in the video, how they use it and sample the music of the Prajuditan uh, procession. Yes, uh, the video itself was recorded uh, by 
one of my friends at the studio, and then they tried to make a sampling sounds from the actual Prajuritan music, what they call as Bergodo Prajuritan in Jogja. Bergodo mean a group of the Prajuritans is just army or members of the army in the Sultan Palace. So these groups usually practice their music separate with the gamelan. So the, the song is definitely cannot be put it in together. But somehow, sometimes during the performance, when the special events, especially during the garabuk, garabuk or sekaten, when the king or member of the king present to that event, sometimes the gamelan sekaten were performed. The groups of music prajuritans also performed while the king walked and admired by the audience. So the situation is very rummy. I'm pretty sure in this regard, the music of prajuritans is influenced by the colonial era in the past where between uh, West and East musical idea are combined together. I saw that uh, Pak Sumarstam book on Gamelan discussed a little bit about how music prajuritans is, is developed in the past during the palace event. I hope this helps, Mas Andrew. Thank you. Yes, I think it clarifies some uh, aspects of it. Yeah, obviously there is a, there's a political element too, which you alluded to, and perhaps we can leave that for another time. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I would be very happy to talk more about the influence of West into East and East in the West. So cross-cultural context is very interesting, especially in relation to the Gamelan. And also the uh, the context of the uh, Jogjakartan resistance to uh, to national uh, narrative. Yeah, there's another interesting idea to be to be considered for next discussions. Yeah, specifically in, in the question. case of this uh, in, in of this video. Yeah. Don't I have a question, Mas. Who has a question? Uh, Midianto. Oh, Midi. How are Hello, you? Hello, Professor Midianto. How are you, <laughs> my brother? Good evening, uh, good, good evening uh, everyone, and uh, excellent presentation, Masters. Good evening to my mentors, uh, Professor Pak Sumarsam and Dr. A.L. Suwardi as well. Uh, if we are talking about the music, uh, A.L. Suwardi, Dr. A.L. Suwardi, that's, that's what he's doing. New composition at the Indonesian Art Institute, but uh, let's uh, connect to uh, uh, the 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 uh, marching marching uh, marching composition. Must must stress, yes, there was yes. I saw that was there was a use for in the banner. I just I read on the banner earlier. That's like a, a for referendum in Jogja, right? They are against. Uh, President Bambang Yudhoyono's uh, uh, government, isn't it correct? Yeah, thank you for bringing this up. Uh, actually, actually, I don't want to discuss much about political points in this regard, but in terms of the musical creativity, uh, I enjoy very much for that compositions. I think for the purpose of video, at that time, the videographers might do choose many different aspects that's interesting visually so that uh, people who see that songs and also on the same time watch the video and connect it to the situations apparently during that time uh, in coincidence with other political issue. This is the interesting point how 
the composer, visual artist, and arranger try to to compose and then link it together into one performing arts and movie in this regard uh, with title Jogja Estimewa. The title itself is already uh, withdrawn attention plus the number of posters who brought to that video, which is beyond my interest to discuss today. Just to clarify, thank you very much. Thank you, I hope this helped. But I would be very happy to discuss with you uh, offline about that one. I'm willing to share the whole night. Thank you very much. I have a question from Mark Parlett. Okay, yes. Mark Parlett. Yeah. Can everybody read the question? I think it's there. We had a little autocorrect problem, but... Um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, the question is um, for the Javanese musicians in Dalongs on the call, um, perhaps they know, is there a reluctance from Wyon groups to include newer music pieces within the traditional... Pakam. Pakam. Yeah. Oh, there it is at the bottom, I see. <laughs> would, would the general public think it's strange if the Iringan is too far outside of the tradition? Thank you very much. Uh, this is very large questions, although the topic itself is very simple, Pakam. But when we are talking about the Pakam, uh, again, we have to deal with uh, Japanese terminology in this regard. We are dealing with Wayang performance. So the subject is even larger now. It's beyond the subject we are discussed today, contemporary music in the gamelan or creativity in the gamelan. But I will try to answer uh, related to these questions as well, uh, as much as I can. In the Japanese traditional performing arts, while the wayang can be considered still a very popular uh, genre, other traditional performance, including dance, Langen Mondrowa Noro, for example, and also from last time, example, Langen Drian, were not, it's not as good as Wayang in this regard. Perhaps the Wayang is very successful and to maintain their traditions because, again, if I can borrow to use the word Jaman Kalakone, Wayang in this regard uh, keep themselves open and allow newcomers or younger generations to, to express themselves through that art forms. From my research related to the Wayang performance and genre that have been developed so far in Java itself, more than 86 types, including the shadow puppet, wooden puppet, and wayang orang. Wayang orang is the dance drama using the idea and dance movement from the wayang shadow puppet performance. There are many different information related to those wayang genre. One particular thing that related to the questions about the pakkam here, in some traditional wayang performance, still very strictly follow the pakkam. Pakkam here is the rules related to what uh, Professor Medianto last time discussed is strongly related to the rasa in patat enam pieces through the wayang performance that need to be followed by the dalang and the musicians. But for the contemporary piece, uh, wayang performance, for example, in wayang padat, they mix the, the pakam into certain points. Maybe the transition from one padat to another padat can be very quickly. 
for example, it's quite common in terms of the changing the pattern, but not follow the actual traditional pakem. For example, in Slendru Songo, pattern when the dalang performance, when the wayang performance, the dalang uh, too much focused on his limbuan or goro goro that can be included in the wayang performance and also goro goro a similar idea using the comedy and other events and then the dalang might forgotten about the time that until about it's almost finished but there's not changed yet while the perang ampia uh, perang kembang still there perang meaning battle scenes during the wayang performance must be in Slendru Songo. So Sampak Slendru Songo is start on five. The cue by the dalang is rokok delang. Delang is the sound of drum. Everyone in the Gamlan family will join. Five, 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 five. One, 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 two, 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 like that. And then suddenly when the dalang sing ooh that is sound of three of the dalang five 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 one 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 two 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 six 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 ooh six 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 three 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 two 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 now switch to patat manuro already without patatan in between only sounds or what we call kombangan kombangan come from kombang Kumbang that has sound like next kumbang is B. The sound of B is uh, implemented in the dalang's voice. It becomes ooh, suddenly changed to the point. So that is, uh, although the dalang not really follow traditional pakam, but that's one of the examples that I use to answer this question. I hope this helped, Mr. Mark. Okay, I have a, a question. Uh, oh, follow up from Mark. He asked, um, he was thinking in the opening Klenningen as a way to introduce new pieces, perhaps. The opening Klenningen to a okay. wide. Uh, just to clarify again, that there are many situations in Java where the sponsors might have a feeling to sustain the traditions and the sponsor will invite the traditional dalang who strictly follow that uh, rules so they will invite traditional dalang or popular dalang and the sponsor can ask for the gending patalon patalon meaning the the cleaningan before the wayang show it's usually about 30 or 40 minutes events. In the past, during the 70th, 80th, most of the wayang performance use traditional patalon, come from word talu, uh, with, with uh, arrangements follow the traditional feeling. And the compositions is always related to gending, gending, traditional, from big gending, ketuk, kaleh, kerep, and then going to ladrang, going to ayak, ayak, similar to what was discussed by, uh, I think, one of our presenters last time, how to choose the gending in regard to the traditional points that exactly follow that traditions but now uh, wayang performance is also very common to have contemporary pieces included before the wayang performance as part of their planning that's i can say for now thank you thank you uh lois anderson is up next with a question yes please Thank you very much for your lecture today. I'm wondering whether there are any other ensembles like Frankie Rodden's 
Indonesian National Orchestra, which combines instruments from all over Indonesia, and he participates in many international music fest ensemble, many international music festivals. Frankie Rodden or Surya Dhamma? Are there other ensembles like his? Oh, yes. Uh, there are other ensembles that sometimes invited to participate in international festival. I heard the lead of Mr. Jaduk Perianto, one of uh, composer who passed away a few months ago, uh, used to perform in Africa and other area in Europe as well. And he brought mainly Japanese gamelan, but mm -hmm. also include other percussions and synthesizers, guitars, and full of Western instruments and packs together into one composition, what they call is music, uh, Quiet Nika, Quiet Nika. Uh, it's available on YouTube, actually. One of his uh, well-known compositions considered as Mission is possible, not mission impossible, but mission is possible. It's available on YouTube. Thank you. There is also uh, contemporary Indonesian music that choreo that uh, composed by other composer like Frankie Raden, for example. Frankie Raden is not. Javanese gamelan musicians, mm -hmm. he's an ethnomusicologist. He used to perform many uh, Western orchestra and sometimes also perform in Indonesia with uh, local musicians, perform a Western music orchestra, like from uh, Beethoven and other composers as well. I hope this uh, answers your question. Uh, Chris Miller actually threw a link into the chat box here of the Frank Aradan Indonesian National Nation Orchestra. If anybody wants to check that out, if you're not familiar, you can click on that link. Uh, yeah, I think also I would like to add here that Chris Miller's dissertation is discussed very much about creasy, or I don't know, related to the creativity or new composition in Indonesia, perhaps if you could please to share a little bit on uh, this question that would be greatly appreciated, Mas Chris. Chris, it sounds like you have to uh, jump on here. Um, yeah, it's, my dissertation was, I don't know if it's, if I was grandfathered into the, they, they set a word limit at Wesleyan, um, and mine was well over uh, and it took forever to do. Um, but anyway, anyway, uh, it's, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, um, I cover a lot in it, but um, I, yeah, so I mean, in, in a nutshell, I, uh, so I, I look at that at both the um, traditionally based on Western oriented composers. So Frankie Radin being on the Western oriented side, but an interesting thing in Indonesia is that uh, because the classical Western, like Western art music is not super robust. It's gotten, my sense is that it's gotten stronger in, in the last decade or decade and a half, but, uh, but, be, but it wasn't, hadn't been that strong that actually even composers who sort of set their sights initially on writing string quartets and such also collaborate with gamelan and other traditional musicians. Um, so that's part of, part of the dynamic that goes on there. But I mean, it's a very, it's a partial view of, of, of things and it's slanted towards the kind of art music, um, experimental music, but and in the last last chapter, I acknowledge the more of the creativity that's going on in more in a more popular vein, um, but really it's it's a partial picture. Um, so that proviso, I'll 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 put the link up to the I have it on my um, 
on my website. So I'll, I'll post a link to that if anyone's interested in it. But um, unless, yeah, unless there's a more specific question, I, I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. That is very interesting uh, points that you uh, mentioned and text to me. Thank you very much. Um, if anybody else has a question, now is the now is the time. If you want to throw a last minute question in here for Mastris. Um Oh, here we have one more. So let's make this the last question um, from Butet. Uh, would you like to jump on again, Butet, and ask your question? Uh, okay, thank you, Pastor uh, Tris. No, I would like to ask a question about the phenomenon of the decomposed. It's uh, the phenomenon that happened now. It's uh, the gamelan is being part of the phenomenon, or it's just that the different music than gamelan that the Diddy Kempot already sing that become really famous now in Indonesia. Thank you very much. A very good questions and thanks to bring this up. And I feel sorry to hear the news, the sudden news recently that maybe for everyone who might know Diddy Kempot is very popular singer, especially in the Champur Sari genre. In this regard, uh, he was able to to promote the campur sari. Campur sari is musical genre using the Javanese language that he promoted until the last day of his his life. Uh, I hope rest in peace for Titi Kompot and the followers of Titi Kompot. Is very amazing from many different peoples from different age, young, old, men, women, governments, persons, and that's also just very popular in any way. So this is one of the proof how the music can help the society and also bring to the points and give an entertainment and also support others using whatever they can. This is a very good phenomenon in this regard because all meet new and I think in the future prospect it will be very good as I consider on the previous uh, discussions Upenging Chokro Manggilingan the will of life will come through Somehow, in Didi Kempot pieces, is very touching. He considered using the Japanese language as a main idea, and the lyric that he chose is uh, very easy to follow and communicative. And the follower is easily to express themselves. And sometimes the idea of how he chose the lyric and the theme of the piece is exactly to conclude this discussion. How his brain and his feeling support his willing to do and help rest in peace for Didi Kempot. And I will pray for him and everyone. Hopefully uh, the pandemic and everything will be solved as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you again, Mastris, for, for joining us um, on this lecture. It's been wonderful. It's been a great discussion, uh, just like you wanted to have. So I'm really happy um, for everybody that stuck around for this great discussion. And uh, I just want to say we will be back on Sunday with uh, actually Chris uh, Miller. And he will be giving us a lecture about a little bit more of a music theory topic uh, combined with some uh, subjective listening qualities, which will be very fun uh, topic for everybody who's here.